Well, I'm so above you, and it's fine to see. But I came to love you anyway. So you tore my heart out, and I don't mind bleeding any old time. Thursday to you. Uh, welcome back. You know, just streaming like we do. We're looking at Bitcoin first, of course. You know, it's cool, dude. Uh, nothing's happened. You know, it's down like almost two percent. Uh, pulling back a little bit after hitting right around thirty-eight thousand five fifty-four. You know, that was that Elon tweet right back from January 29th. Uh, you have not yet made higher highs than previous highs. So that's like. Hey man, so in a 24 hour period, your favorite asset that you're obsessed with hasn't done anything. So, sorry, I can't do much else. Can't do more analysis, all right? Uh, 
maybe Hidden Bearish Divergence is developing on the MACD, right? From your previous eye to this eye now, uh, higher levels of positive momentum that can imply a continuation of the downside, um, which is fine, you know, as long as the asset, when it sells off, just makes a higher low than 32K. It's all gonna be good, man. It could run up, and then maybe the Wyckoff uh, accumulation uh, schematic we were talking about uh, can play out. That means the asset's gonna need to get up to, you know, in the 40s, the you know, 40 to 41 thousand dollars, and this could be Phase D if that was gonna happen. Just sending good vibes, brother. Appreciate you, man. Freaking cherry picking. Thanks for the. Uh, Is that a joint? 420, super chat, man. Okay, thank you, dude. Good vibes, everyone. Yep. Good vibes for Bitcoin, but uh, that's just being hope hopeful until higher highs are achieved. You just haven't seen higher highs or higher lows yet at all. So, God, I want to see one or the other, right? Give me a higher high or just give me a higher low. Give me one. You don't have it yet. So, uh, I mean, what happened? What was it? El Salvador's president is talking about, uh, you know, utilizing volcanoes to mine Bitcoin efficiently and 100% uh, uh, emission free, right? I mean, it produces water vapor. I mean, that's insane. I mean, that's so amazing. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully you like the thumbnail or whatever, laser eyes on the volcanoes. Riveting. Am I being quiet? I Hello, am I being quiet? I'm, I'm here. Like, I mean, I'm talking the same I do every day. Yeah, it's just weird thing to say. Uh, below the 200 moving average, remember, when you're in an uptrend, man, you want to be below that. Look how long you were above that four hour 200 moving average for so long. I mean, you're well below it. It's angled down. You need to get back above that and hold above it if you want to stand uptrend for any amount of time. All right. Still no edge for bulls. The daily, there was a bullish engulfing candle yesterday, but as we talked about literally yesterday, you could do 24 hours of nothing. There could be indecision for, for uh, 24 hours. That's literally happening right now. Nothing's going on. Good to see the positive momentum's uh, still building. And I, yeah, I mean, you could say you're diverging down here on the RSI, but uh, again, right? I mean, you get a big spike in negative momentum, positive momentum, and then you sell off again and you get more negative momentum. But on the second time you get lower levels and that's that classic bullish divergence we so covet as swing traders. Uh, it's just not, <clears throat> it is just not the asset to trade right now if you are a swing trader. It's just not, man. There's too much volatility, 10% dumps, 5% punks. Uh, I mean, up and down. What's up, Martin, dude? Let's go, man. Martin Misagi tipped $100. I wasn't able to make it down to Miami to buy you a drink, but here's a virtual thank you. Well, I appreciate it, man, and I uh, wish you could have made it. It was Just the best. Just learned that you can type in the tip value. SMH. Anyways, for a wheel spin. Type in the tip value. Scrog, man, thanks. To, well, I would hope you can type in the tip value. You mean the tip amount. Thanks, dude. Uh, Martin, yeah, man, it was best best vacation, best trip I've ever had, um, and it not it's not even close. Okay, so uh, we'll do it again though. We definitely will. I mean, I don't know, like, well, I mean, that ruined all other places for me. I don't even know how you can up Miami. Where do you go if you want to up Miami? What Dubai or something crazy? I've been to Vegas, man. It's just been to New York, been to LA. I don't know. We'll we'll figure it out, right? So thank y'all. Um, so let's see. You know, I mean, today we close hour forty four minutes like this. Fine, indecision. The engulfing candle is still valid. It's still valid until you get a daily candle close below thirty three thousand two hundred dollars. We're just hoping, man. We're just hoping for. I mean, that's all we can do is smoke some opium, dude. All right, with Elon, or maybe without Elon, right? He's cut out. No more, no more Elon. All right, you're where we are, right? The asset went to phase, you know, C, and it went down to the bottom of the range, and has bounced off of it. Very nice, very nice bounce. Remember, twelve percent rally yesterday, and we're just hanging out right Whoa. around here. What's up, Mitch? You crown and trade a reality in a podcast would be freaking godlike knowledge. 
Hope you have a good day. All, all uh, Eric Crown has to do is just reach out via Instagram, Twitter, and I'm there, man. That's all that has to happen, and it's going to happen. So it's it's on him if he wants to do it. Uh, a lot of respect for that guy. He's an actual, literal institution in this space. That's it, man. All right? Thank you, dude. Uh, so phase D, if, you know, again, this is not the formula that's taught here, right? This is speculative. We talked about it yesterday. I feel like it's the same stream almost. Um where if you do want to see you know the schematic play out for real the asset at some point uh, soonish you know in the next couple days needs to rally up to 40 to forty two thousand dollars chop around consolidate and then break it resoundingly and then yeah you could back you know rally and then you, you would hit uh those levels of resistance above you probably around like 43k you may not be able to break them and then you sell off again to back test that range 60 minute four hour range and then after you test that, you sell off again to back test the top of the little trading range. Or again, right here, 40 to 41K. And then that would be the confirmation Mark Dismans need. Then the big rally ensues after that. But uh, we don't know yet because, again, until you make a higher low and or a higher high, it's just it's really suspect, man. You just can't trust it yet, right? You have just consecutive lower highs for now, unfortunately. But that's okay, man. There's many assets out there. I mean, one of them. Well, you ones that go long, a prolonged trade setup, which is hex. It's up eight percent. It did hit all-time highs today um, on the last four-hour candle. It got as high as uh, seven point six cents. It had never seen that before. I think that's spectacular with the way Bitcoin's been performing. Right? I mean, it's in its own world. It's it's a bullish five o, like bullish five o territory reversed at that 502 i mean that's so ta being really well respected um with just a formal harmonic right a bear shark that turns into a bullish 50 and goes so i don't know above this man if you can get above it who knows how long it'll take eventually one's just patient waiting for the 10 cent mark you know, which is the second target of the uh pretty much the position trade the weekly trade setup on hex all right that's nice man uh there's no bearish divergence or anything nothing's implying a reversal at least on the four hour right now on the daily oh god dude the daily is insane absolutely crazy on the daily man why because you're like you had all this prolonged negative momentum and now today for the first time you're showing positive memo since may 28th but really since like kind of may 18th and what's really nice, the conditions are perfect. The RSI on HEX is at 66 to 67. The only thing that's better than that is it being around 62 because it's just a little bit, you know, further away from overbought. So, you know, get a few more ticks up. It doesn't matter, man. That when it gets overbought, it can go nuts, right? So HEX technically still looks like, I mean, it, the only reason I'm saying this is because of the technicals, man. It just looks good. I can't help it. I can't help that this asset looks different than like everything else. It's not my fault. Don't get mad at me for just bringing it up, all right? I can't believe this guy. Sorry, hold on. Target, 10 cents, 9.7 cent area. And that's it, man, for now. On the cusp of uh, real glory. A lot of upside, according to the oscillators, on a significant time scale. Nice. Okay. Um, and so we, we do need to talk about YRD, which was, uh, you know, Yiren. It was all it was was uh, someone I, I was scanning or someone requested it in our Patreon. One or the other. It doesn't matter where it comes from, it le as long as it's from our community. Well, there's me scanning with them, a patron that's learned the ways. Um, this was it, dude. It was a textbook bullish Gartley pattern. Okay, the pattern completion zone just happened to be at a critical ice line. It goes all the way back to February of 2016. Specimen behavior. And it just happened to blow up. And, and really, I know, yeah, you get all the... It's like, it's, is it low volume? No, because it's like 9 million volume. But on average, the average 10 day volume is only about a million. So whatever. I mean, yeah, I guess you get it like that. And we just looked at the daily to, to analyze this anyway. It wasn't really the four hour, but you can clearly see left shoulder, head, right shoulder stuff going on. 
at the PCZ. That's the stuff. Your momentum shifting structure out of pattern completion zone with bullish Gartley uh, near the ice line from 2016. That is, that's what uh, dreams are made of. That's like why you watch the stream because of this stuff. All right. Let's uh, let's just look here and listen. You know. When was this uh, posted? Uh, I was just doing. Uh, I think I don't. I think it was uh, just me scanning. Yep, uh, I, I pinged all patrons May twentieth. YRD. <clears throat> uh, YRD. YRD. Oops, the heck, sorry. Yeah. YRD, bullish Garley at the pattern completion zone and Wyckoff accumulation schematic. Pause it, operator, doing things at everyone. Your patron, you were pinged, you were alerted, you were warned. Okay. That was like. Right there, dude. That's it. That's your ticket to prosperity if you're a swing trader, position trader, investor. Not staring at Bitcoin every day. Praying to God that it goes up or down, right? I mean, that you, you are scanning proactively looking for stuff like this, okay? Wyckoff accumulation, Gartley combination. Amen, okay? We go. So it got us high. I mean, it hit C, right? If you're talking about targets for a, a Gartley, you know, the Casey Stubbs way, we're talking about C and A. Gets the T and A in Miami. So you did uh, get a close right at the top of the range, and um, I would think that the next target level is probably going to be right around uh, $7 to $7.50. Uh, wide open space spaces, man. Pretty much straight down, straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down. Um, that's it. Uh, really high volume, highest level of volume you've seen literally since 2016 how about that man catch me outside why are you all right so that's like oh man you, you know it's in the uh it's in the title of the stream we looked at it congratulations all right total market cap it's hanging out 1.56 trillion dollars dead middle of the range between 1.3 trillion 1.7 ish trillion dollars Okay, nice, nice when assets aren't at areas that make sense for longing opportunities literally at that time, nothing we can do about it, right? If anything, I mean, this looks like Ethereum kind of, and I'll, we're going to look at Ethereum of course next, but just think about, you know, this type of behavior, you know, it's it's like 618, okay, it's a little too to perfectly topped, I get it, but you just, you think, man, like a little bit deeper, right? Like 786 areas. I mean, that lines up with like critical areas. That's, he makes another lower high, sells up. Man, that could be a golden opportunity. Uh, possibly, right? It could be. It could be. Same time, you never get there, whatever. Just, just bringing it up, ideas, because that's all we have right now, our ideas, right? Wyckoff accumulation ideas, harmonic ideas. Right, here we Mitch, go again. I've been enjoyed watching nice. you and actively participating in the Discord again. community for the past year. I've truly learned a lot. Unfortunately, last week I was permabent from the Discord. I will miss talking to everyone I got to know. Thanks for ride. Uh, thank you for the tended. Um, I don't. I mean, hey man, uh, if you want to appeal your ban, you can reach out to the mods and talk to them. Uh, it's unfortunate, man. I don't know. Like, it's there are strict guidelines to protect the quality of the community. So it's like if you violate those, you're warned, and if you keep doing it, you get banned. I, I, that's kind of how it works, and it's because people are paying money for a positive environment that lacks to toxicity, right? I mean, you, you had to have done something wrong, right, to get banned. Conse you know, to be consecutively doing something wrong to get banned. I don't know. Again, you can place your appeal with the mods. Thanks for the 10. Okay. Let's go to Ethereum. Where 
unable to make higher highs, unable to break above 2600, only testing it as resistance, guh. Back below 2500, guh. I mean, the lowest risk area, you'd think, is just like we talked about <clears throat> on total. Very, it's kind of a little too similar here. It's like a little too perfectly topped, but you just got to think right down here, these levels, it makes so much sense, doesn't it? Like, right, it makes so much sense because there's so much congestion. It's like your high from February 20th, just your lows, your highs all over the place, April. It's it's just so much congestion there. It just makes too much sense. You know, and, and it, it's just like that is what you'd, if you wanted to take like a legendary trade setup idea and you want to take a long, you'd be looking for bullish divergence on multiple time scales at this like $2,000 area. I mean, for real. Uh, you may never get it, but I'm just telling you what you want to see. If you want to apply the formula that works so well so often across all markets, right? Can y'all hear me? Is the sound good? Is the audio music too, too loud, too quiet? Healer. We're all good. Still getting over, I don't know, a bug. Feeling a little bit better than yesterday for sure though. So that's that's like what you'd hope could happen, but hey, you know, I hold being a holder, you know, being a believer in this space. It would be amazing if it never hit there, right? But if we're talking about, there's a difference between like be having conviction uh, and belief and the long-term uh, outlook on crypto, right? There, that's different than looking for strategic long opportunities at deep value areas, right? They're different. And that's where a lot of times people join this community and I read comments and I, it's like, you're just not getting what I'm saying to you. You're not understanding. Like, I'm not trying to predict where an asset's going. I'm looking for areas that, where all the variables line up, where we have a greater chance than a coin flip that it's gonna go up or down. And I just don't think we're at those levels in, on some of these coins yet, you know? That's it. And in the meantime, we, we do education. We, we, you know, teach, try to, get as many people on board so they can identify this stuff and, and it grows and it's been snowballing, accumulating, and it's turned into some magical thing that didn't exist ever before, really. It's its own thing now. I love it. So grateful for it. So keep investing in yourself. Keep learning things taught here. And I think it's going to really help your ability trading, swing trading, position trading, and investing. Okay. I guess we're gonna Litecoin, but well, you know, down. We knew, we knew it, man. It's like it started just not really doing anything. It's just going with Bitcoin, turned more of into like a triangle, and it's the same thing. Where hey, you know, I think it it would be awesome if there was more downside on this asset because it's so close to places we want to see for long opportunities, right? It's, they're all six one eights on B. That's awesome, dude. This asset could just get down to like freaking 135. My God, it could be a legendary opportunity. Just remember, after drawdown, after drawdown, you get the XABCDs in similar context, right? It's, that could be amazing. Especially if there's like, hey, bullish divergence on the daily and four hour. That would be crazy. That'd be so good. Just hasn't happened yet. Uh, we're waiting. We're in no man's land kind of, you know. But at least we can visualize where opportunity could be had. Submit. Hopefully the El Salvador news proved to people that Elon is no the only factor that matters in this market. Once similar bigger moves come, Elon will be left in the dust. Uh, well, I mean, you know, it looks like Elon has way more pull in the market than an entire government of a country, right? Because that El Salvador news, nothing happened. I mean, if anything, uh, when that news broke, the asset, or Bitcoin itself, sold off. I remember we were in Miami and it was just like, oh my God, that's crazy. And then it like dumped some and then dumped again before rallying 12% yesterday. So, gotta be patient, man. We gotta be patient. 
weight, but that's okay. There's other assets to look at. I mean, like, you know, altcoins across the board are all down except Hex. I mean, I mean I'm sure there's a couple outliers. We have VeChain, man. VeChain, similar stuff, right? It's like, uh, it's actually okay. I mean, dang, dude. Like, back testing that March 22nd high ass support. Wow. But you know it's going to much lower levels of Bitcoin dumps. It, it's a little bit better than like one in Ethereum right now. But if things get bad, you know how it is, man. It could just be one of these situations. It's a cipher. It's a cipher, dude. Or you, there could be a, a great opportunity at 60 or 6.8 cents, right? I mean, if things get bad, that's exactly where it's headed. But at the same time, hey, Bitcoin, that Wyckoff accumulation schematics real doesn't go any lower than this. It doesn't go any lower than 10 cents and then rallies to probably 20 cents eventually. So she keeps making higher lows. But it can't break 14 cents. Big sell wall there. But good news for now is you just keep making higher lows. That's it. I mean, it's the fourth time now, right? But yeah, I mean, long-term uptrend, it was a deep retrace. You got a good bounce off of it. You got a nice rally, but you're not performing very well because the macro is not performing that great, right? It's just not able to break old resistance. It's just regarding it as resistance again. We can go across this market and talk about almost every single altcoin doing the same thing. It's so homogenous, man. Like BNB, same thing. Or now you're at really critical areas. You know, you, I don't think you really want to break below this February 20th high of 330 to 350. Because, it, But if it did, it's really, it, there might be opportunity, right? I mean, hey, the Ember's head and shoulder is really not playing ball too well, is it? It's not really going anywhere, is it? No, but like, again, we've already brought this idea up days ago. Things get bad for Bitcoin good because this because you could have a beautiful harmonic just like the others at 250 and that is exactly where you want to see harmonic it's a big drawdown you get a big x a b c d right we could be on the c to d wave right now and there just could be absorption of remaining demand at this level before it uh, dumps and it, it would require bitcoin to dump too for that to play out right in the daily yeah, man, I mean, like the daily is just ugly because you just have like very clear, discernible, hidden bearish divergence on the MACD. Look at the high on price, the much lower high on price and higher levels of positive momentum. That implies continuation of the downside next. Just like Bitcoin has. Bitcoin ha certainly has the same thing, hidden bearish divergence on the daily. So if you get that, hey, guess what? You come on down the 200 day moving average again and you hit the PCZ, the harmonic, and it's discernible and visible on the daily. Whoa, that'd be awesome. Hi, Mark. Can you PLS look at RSI on three day for BTC? What's that, Adam? Dude, You're talking about Bitcoin, I guess, man. Yeah. All right. Isn't it unfortunate when we're in these situations? You know, the lull of the summer. We got, we had the same lull last year. If you were a member of this community, it was tough, dude. It was like the desert. We had a few streams that were desert themed or something like that. I don't know. Um, I should start playing. I should do that. I should like get the locusts, you know, like that noise in the middle of summer. If you live in the south, there's the chiracas or whatever they're called. Making noises. We'll figure that out. Okay, that just happens in the summer, so it may go away. Um, but yeah, speaking of like what causes that man volatility though is wow elevated to its highest level since march 1st to a day man it's continue hey, and it's still like that idea we have right where this could uh, appear like the xabcd just like the bearish gartley played out perfectly back in march of, la of last year covid crash so it's it's at it's the top, man. China it's to me. Back China. To China. Capitulation you lows from 2018. Your shoelaces are wet. Why would they be wet? Even if the lace is dry, virus and bacteria are trying to eat here. Up. Get checked for COVID. Lots that went to Miami conference testing positive now. 0.01969300 LTC. Okay, dude. Oh my God, I got COVID. No, what am I going to do, man? 
work from home, so, you know, whatever. All right, uh, thank you, Polly Walnuts. Nurse Betty over here. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, I mean, can you believe that the volatility right now is rivaling levels we saw when Bitcoin lost uh, 55% of its value in a five-week period? And hit that 3150 low and it's also rivaling the levels of volatility we saw when bitcoin uh reached that buying climax of fourteen thousand dollars before eventually seeing a bottom at 3850 right that's where we are that's crazy man so we'll see if it tops out up there right i mean it just keeps going man it might hey it could end up being a cipher eventually you know instead of a garley but you're thinking one level or another that's going to happen and then the volatility is going to subside and dry up a little bit and then we could finally see that come all the way back down to the bottom of the range. Just an idea. You know, we're just messing around spitballing. But remember, Scott Carney brought up uh, on one of our little talks, our little powwow session. It was beautiful, dude. It was like 786. The bearish Gartley. So, uh, maybe we get something similar in time. And then you have Bitcoin Dominance that uh, is continuing to rise today off of that uh, little four hour Gartley. Nice. Uh, where you think eventually if this is gonna play out. Noise, it, noise. In the spirit of throwing out ideas, could you look at the idea of a descending triangle on the BTC daily? Starting mid-May and ending around the end of June. Thoughts on that? P.S. Don't underestimate parties in Nashville. Jeffrey P, thanks for the 20. Oh yeah, don't under, underestimate Nashville parties. I mean, I've been there, it's it's cool, you know? A little bit different of a vibe though, for sure. Where a country's, I like old school 90s, early 2000s country. I don't like the country now, um, but I do love like just EDM and the stuff they play at those Miami clubs where they have like the best DJs in the world there. Man. Now it's hard to beat it when that's like my vibe, you know? It's like, hey, every day that I go live, what type of music normally are we listening to, right? Gentlemen. It's not country music. It's the music they play in Miami, so it just, I vibe well with Miami. Anyway, uh, thank you, dude. Okay, meet up in Nashville, bring your cowboy hat. New Age, New Age country is not country. I agree, it's not really. It's Yeah, Travis Tritt, hype, dude, yep. Uh, so anyway, I mean, remember this presenting itself at a deep retrace from your lowest low ever. Uh, I mean, that to me implies that the probability is pretty high that you're going to see Bitcoin at 50% market cap dominance in the nearest future. Okay, it's just the, the coin flip is weighted to that. That's exactly the variables you look for on, on asset, traditional assets that can be traded deep retraces and then at those deep retrace the deepest retrace levels they present other uh, bullish things other bullish reversals and you get that little four hour Gartley I think that's great and, and again why, why 50 percent because look love in July 2017 all throughout 2017 and uh, 2018 right that's that's it that's X marks the spot that's the target 50 percent so what does that mean? I mean, that, that means a few things, right? You think that uh, if Bitcoin it doesn't go well for Bitcoin, then money starts flooding out of altcoins at an accelerated rate. And that can just push this up inherently, right? So was it, someone said something about Bitcoin three day, was it RSI or something? Ah, you still got a little time, like a, a day and two hours for uh, the close. But you, what'd you say, hold on. RSI three day Bitcoin. We're looking at the RSI three day Bitcoin. It's at uh, 38, still bearish territory. It looked bad a couple days ago. It's still not very good, right? Anything below 40 is bearish territory, right? Bearish control zone, it's also called. Uh, you're in it still. So, and you're not oversold, meaning market participants could push this thing way lower if they truly wanted to. So, I don't really know what it was exactly you were. Wanting to really see here, you know, I don't really, nothing sticks out as good. 
I mean, you know, remember the tweet someone posted was like hidden bullish divergence idea, but I mean, yeah, it's still valid until you close below 30,333 on three day, which you haven't even come close. I mean, you've gotten close ish, but like I'm talking thousands of dollars away. A lot of hopium, dude. That's all. That's all we can talk about on Bitcoin. Hopium. <sighs> I'm still talking. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, man. Like, all we can talk about is country music. You know, on days like this, when everything. I mean, how's volatility so high? You know, it doesn't seem. I mean, it is. It's it's real. I mean, you get big swings locally. Boomer metals making noise. Mux Chindi train. Next diag. Uh, well, yeah, that's a trade setup, Whippy. Both of those are trade setups. So, yep, because that's where the party is. The party's not in crypto right now. I mean, you can clearly see it kind of like sell wall around four bucks on Tezos. Um, below 333 repeating, of course. I mean, resistance support. And wouldn't you say an X, A, B, C, D, you know, deep retrace around 270, 260. I think you could wait and maybe get a better bid for what price is, and it could make a lot of sense strategically where the harmonic is after a dump before a reversal, more significant reversal, where you've tried and tried and tried three different times and failed. You failed three times, man. What the heck's going on here? Dude, we can just keep going with the theta. Still unable to recapture uh, levels above that supply line and also the $10 psychological resistance. And uh, again, I just kind of hard to be like, oh, great time to go long on theta based on, you know, the system we have, right? The variables, they're just not there. I just, you think you could wait. Mitch, can we chart can choose PLS? Trading view Bitrex chart has longest data. I can't figure this one out. Can't figure it out. What does that mean? The variables probably aren't there if you're trying to apply the system taught here, right? Uh, yeah, I guess whatever at this point, dude. That's like the first request. So I guess we can just do this since no. Thank you, dude. Just seen it's 20 now, so here. Thumbs up. Yeah, man, it's been 20, but hey, man, wait. We're on the threshold of lower end, dude. <laughs> Say that, but then yesterday, I, I couldn't even... I mean, it's a, like I, I was doing requests till the end of the stream, like over two hours. Uh, Q&T. I think this is a good one. I mean, it's sideways, man. It's... It's range bound asset between $30 and $50 and it's at $47. So it's nearing the top of the range. Up 6% today, nice. And if you break $50, I think that's the threshold where a big markup could occur. Big markup to minimum 60 bucks, $59. You tried that though. You tried that May 28th. You tried that June 3rd, you failed twice. So it's really tough to be like great time to, to long based on value areas. Daily I meant PLS. It's not easy. It's not a good area. It's not an easy area to strategize uh, setting up stop losses, right? Like how can you do it? How, how do you do it and have an equitable trade where it's like three to one reward or risk? Daily you meant. Bullish and golden candle yesterday, a little bit of fall through. Uh, bullish convergence. Noise. Sorry about the noise, man. I can't help these third party the apps. They conference. crap themselves. I can't Glad help it. Dude. Mitch. No, they're infected, man. What are we gonna do, man? What are we gonna do? There's only a 90, 95 percent, 97 percent chance that people will recover. 
We're going to be all right, Anonymous. Thank you, dude. Neither is my privilege to address a group of men. Uh, anyway, I mean, like, if we're looking at the daily, again, it's the same situation <clears throat> where the lowest risk area is $30, and then you could say maybe the higher risk area is $50, and you're at $48, you're $2 away from that. So, but if you have a break, $50. I mean, we're talking 60 bucks. $60, $62, right? I mean, this should only be visible in the four hour. Right above 50. There's 56, that high from May 13th, and then the $62 high from, uh, no, you had May, May 13th, and then you had May 18th, right? Those highs, so, right? Super sideways, so you're saying you're in trouble figuring it out? Um, strange amount. No trend on this. Oh, dang, Jared. Oh my God, dude. Listen to this. Hey Mitch, we just had our second baby boy yesterday. What do you think of front name choices, E.T. Han, Adam or Big Maximus? You're going to put my kids through college, man. No! Hi Mitch, Congratulations, can you dude. please explain how I would DCA into BTC with 1.5k dollars? Something like setting a $500 buy order at 35k, 30k and 25k? Many thanks for the education. Uh, I mean, you probably can't go wrong with that, right? And you could divide it up, you know, by four. And if it ever went down to 20K, you'd be able to add there too on the back test of the old all time high. So, yeah, sure. That's all you can do. It's not, you're not strategically taking a long based on technical analysis, but you do believe in the what Bitcoin is, what it stands for, and hyper-Bitcoinization is upon us. I mean, it's starting with El Salvador, kind of. And you just gotta be patient, you know? Better than fiat. Keep debasing uh, currency. But what, the uh, Federal Reserve balance sheet just hit, uh, I believe, $8 trillion deficit, was it? Something like that? Today, for the first time ever. Wow, $8 trillion. Congratulations, Fed. So, well, your son was born as the Fed hit $8 trillion. Amazing. You should name him, uh, what is it? Optimus, Octo, Octo Man or something, right? Like the, the antagonist from that Spider-Man movie. That's what his name should be. Jared. Okay. Just kidding. But, uh, Ethan, probably I would go with Ethan, Jared of the three. All right. Octavius. Why not Octavius? He was born and then that happened and it's hilarious and we it's all an inside joke for us. And then he grows up and uh, we're like, oh dude, it's Octavius, man. Hey, and Octavius was like, what, the, uh, the first real emperor of the, uh, the Roman Empire after, you know, they got all the Julius Caesar stuff. He was number one and he was a good one. He was like, he had like a really good legacy, I think. So... Um, that's pretty cool, dude. Anyway, sorry, not trying to tell you what to do. Just we're having fun here, okay? What else can we do? All right, Q and T sideways. Um, if you break to you break fifty, man, what is that upside? You know, the upside above fifty from where it is now. We're talking like thirty-one percent upside, and maybe if it really going, I mean, you got fifty percent upside if this. This runs. I mean, I like the higher lows going on kind of locally. That's not too bad. Uh, might be better than a lot of other assets out there. Interesting. Where, you know, most assets today are down 6%. This one's up 6%. Nice. Octavius, child of the Citadel. Perfect, dude. Exactly. Wow. your QNT literally the only uh, the only uh, request today let's go to that's okay though dude gold miners where it's at dude <clears throat> gold miners 
Yes, 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 go back. Noise, noise! Can we look at napped divergence on the weekly? Cyber, yeah, we'll do it. Um, yes. Here's your new golds. Uh, we had identified this to patrons, the ice line from 2015, that it had finally broken recently, uh, or like late May. And uh, this is what happens, Larry. You break that, Ubi good super chat at fifty dollars. Can we look at Let's the coin shorts? Smiley face. We can do it, dude. Yeah, thank you, man. Bruh. We can definitely do that. Ubi. Don't get infected, man. A lot of people got infected, man. It just sounded weird, dude. I don't know. Uh, the upside potential above two dollars eventually, man. You have to understand that you look left. It's like psycho. It's crazy. It's like straight down, straight up, straight down, straight up. Yeah, like a couple times it didn't really do that and it went straight down and you up thrusted a couple times, but the up thrust sold off and you pivoted and you're back above the critical ice line, man. I mean, NGD could be like going to $3 eventually and the upside of that is like what? I mean, we're talking like 45% upside if it actually runs up to those levels it's been to before. And the real one's like four dollars twenty cents or so. Is that a joint? But it's not like it's just not just NGD, man. It's looking good. There's a lot of you know, miners looking good, as Whippy brought up a minute ago. So we can we can look at those. But to, first off, let's see. Um... Oh, Jared. By the way, it's a it's a twenty dollar minimum if you're gonna name your uh, your your second born on stream. Okay, if you want to request? I'm just kidding. It's funny. Uh, you know, it's just like. Uh, Hmm. Well, dude, we've been here before. It's not like we hadn't been here. God, I feel like I've been all over the block, man. Not the new kids on the block, the old kids on the block. I mean, this is that lower risk area, certainly. It didn't quite get there. But did make from that previous low to high a deep 90% retrace or so, maybe even a little bit deeper, maybe 95 from that uh, April XABCD as well. Not really formal, right? Because you got it's just kind of like this, you know. That's kind of what's going on, man. I think what's going down episode of That's My Mama. <laughs> so uh, yeah, man. But uh, obviously, you could get the best area ever, 72 to 91 no, cents, but you're not there, right? No, <clears throat> Mitchie, no. Excuse me. I thought it was no granny, no. What? My middle name is Mitch. Get wrecked, dude. So, uh. You kind of like just got that going on, man. I mean, lower threshold of a range could go lower and be awesome, but man, there are just times when assets get 90%, 95%, it's just deep value in it. That just shows like really, really uh, subtle levels of accumulation from August 2017, the lowest point, but then right here, COVID crash. It, it took uh, all the King's men to push this price down to 91 cents. It couldn't even do it because it only got the 96 cents. When we had a triple black swan event, the world was falling apart, dude, okay? It fell apart and it still couldn't hit that level. It couldn't do it. That's really strong. So now things are like kind of crazy, you know, and market conditions are nothing like they were uh, from, you know, in March of last year. So this could be like a great area uh, for like to layer in and you could just layer in all the way down to 85 cents it ever got there, but it may not get there, okay? I mean, you could look at this like kind of dude, I mean, really sharkish behavior. I mean, that's like, uh, yeah, dude, 886, 95%. That's like a shark. That is a bullish shark. Forget the Rudy Poop pump here. Whatever, man. I mean, that, these things happen. But um, take out the noise. It's perfect. I mean, this is a shark, dude. You know? Lower risk areas. Better than, you know, just randomly taking a long on total in the middle of a huge range between 130 trillion, 177 trillion, right? Okay, cool.
cool dude neptune wellness solutions bio oh god biotech dude all right they can just fda could just come out and be like y'all killed somebody dead all right biotech is a wild wild world it was it was the altcoin market before altcoins existed okay this is the wild west out here dude so it does take a like if you're gonna trade biotech I think the fundamentals, or like not fundamentals, but keeping your ear to the ground and really paying attention to the news and when they have clinical trials and stuff coming out, uh, that's really important, I think, in this market because those are like earnings reports because these things, these assets don't make any money. They like never make money. So it's really like important that you know, hey man, they got FDA approval uh, coming up, you know, like we're, we're gonna know, we're gonna find out if they get approved or not, like on the 18th, oh my God, you know, like, that's, that's important in biotech. Yeah. Okay. FDA is now accepting bribes. Good. Nice. All right, Obi man. Let's take a look at, at that, dude. Yeah, dude. Absolutely crazy. I mean, it's, it's insane. Um, haven't looked at this in a while, but yeah, it skyrocketed. You're at your highest levels. Bitcoin shorts are at their highest level since March 18th. Of the COVID crash, right? The COVID crash, man, which is literally the bottom. Gentlemen, mm. in the mix. That's how high these shorts are right now. 18,729. I'm Biffin X. There was tremendous amounts of divergence down here at all time lows before this huge spike. But all this means, like all it means on Bitfinex, not all exchanges, right? This is just Bitfinex. This is not an aggregate, one exchange. Um, it's just saying this is the amount of the quantity of short uh, positions open. It doesn't talk about like, it's not really implying the amount of money. It's about the positions. It could be a bunch of $1 shorts open, right? And it's just that many open positions. It's, it's really tough, man. I mean, you think if it ever, uh, I mean, just, Based on history, there's a lot of chop, man, all over the place, right? It's just... Really tough to apply traditional technical analysis, as you can see. Look at this chart. It's just all, all kinds of pumps and dumps, man. You can't really do much besides look at that and just see, look, hey, man, inflection point. Certainly inflection point, right? I mean, look. October uh, 2017, right? Then you got May 2018. Then you got July 2018. Then you got... November 2018, then you got March 2019, April 2019. My God, Ubi, May 2019 again, June of 2019. Look, dude, April 2020. This is a major inflection point. So you break it, most likely you run straight up to 30,548, but it's really tough, man. As you can see, steel wall. So it's kind of like, I don't know, that's it, dude. Like, that's, that's all I can tell you. Wow, 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 dude. What a chart. Crazy. But I can't apply the system the formula, the, the, the blue magic. There's no blue magic that we can do here, right? John, excellent man. No, oh, dude, I mean, you should have, John Rogerio, dude. It was the time to be taken along on Hex was 1.1 pennies. That was the time to long hex. But I tell you, man, I'm glad, hey, you're making money, dude. I will always be happy about that. All right. So it would be, I mean, sorry, dude. It would, are you satisfied? That's a $50 super chat. So I'm just like, inflection point. And above that is 30K. Like, as you can clearly see, because that's like how many times up there, you know? We're at uh, rally to October 2017, you know, June 2018, May 2019, June 2019. Mitch, could you look at DGLY look? Would you identify this as phase C of Wyckoff since June of 2020 and or an inverted head and shoulders on the weekly going oh, back to good. October of 2017 with bullish divergence on the weekly? Are you trying to tell me we got Tree Peak guy going on, Falapa? I like Tree Peak guys. Don't get my hoops up, dude, okay? Hmm. 
but we've been here before. I mean, it's it's at those level. It reminds me of DCST or whatever we looked at yesterday. I think we, I mean, it looked good above 230, but then it fell below it again. It's like, God, man, like what can you do? I can't say it's a formal harmonic. I think that's too whack on X to A. Too deep for retrace, probably. But how deep is this uh, low point here from that previous low? Is it a 786, 886? In between the 786, 886, dang. So look how it reversed the 786 with rallied and then dumped again. So um, I think it would be best, Valapa, if we can get back above 232, I'm feel way more confident about this asset. But at the same time, you know, there's that low right there from November 2017 that is certainly holding above right now. That's what it's looked regarding as support. So. So you're trying to say, uh, what? Noise! Noise! Sorry, chat, about the noise. Bondolero uh, Ferreras hits $21.18. Hey, Mitch, excellent stream as always. Do you think we will see Reef below $2 again? Thanks, man. Bandolero, uh, Ferreria. Thank you, dude. Uh, I don't know. We'll look at it. Cheers. So, I mean, you can go, you can easily argue lower risk areas here right i mean hey you're not at stupid high levels so mitch my man us uk party people usually frequent the greatest island on earth ibiza i highly recommend based on your music taste and your good time in miami ibiza i thought it was ibiza i don't know yeah i think there's ibiza and ibiza i don't know dude uh yeah at risk of sounding stupid, is that in that South America or something, right? Yeah, maybe so. Maybe so. Thank you, dude, for the uh, recommendation and the is that a join contribution? Yeah, dude, you can't. I don't think you can go wrong here on DGLY. Like, if one's just gonna be holding it for um, a while, no dividend. Uh, it meets the minimum volume criteria. It doesn't pay. Uh, or, let's see, it doesn't make any money. Uh, make some money, I guess, right? Uh, price earnings, PE is 4.33, and then you had a uh, 47 cent uh, EPS. All right, so hey, it makes money and it's at a value area. These levels, there is a gap fill down here. It never filled at $1.18, but I think if one was just to set up a protective stop below the area that one's trying to strategize at over 17 and low, I think, it, yeah, it could be good and there could be a, a tremendous amount of upside on SAS in time. One's patient this is the daily and it could take a while but uh you're also saying phase c of wyckoff uh, accumulation right since june 2020. Noise, noise. It's okay. hey mitch glad to see you had a blast in miami you deserve it new to ta and you take a look at ideonomics inverse head and shoulders pattern on the daily yeah, I think that's one we've been covering. <clears throat> we've been looking at that knowledge point. Thanks to 25. Thanks to support uh, being a Patreon man. Much love. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping you're, you're learning a lot in there, right? And just being... Uh, all you gotta do is learn a lot. Right? Being active in that chat, man. It is so active, dude. Good God. I love it, man. And I never knew that's what it turned into. So, thanks, dude. Right? I mean... As you know, like, hey, I think anything above 172 could be, you know, an area to strategize a, a long down 2.5 or since a day. Still below that 200 day moving average, but that deep retrace levels from that COVID crash low. So I think um, it's not bad here. It's not bad, okay? DGLY. Composite operator levels. That's like where if the smart money is going to take longs this is where the smart money takes longs at these levels yeah hey mitch glad you had a good time in miami jersey shore is where it's at though oh yeah Snooks, it wants jersey you shore. to take a look at doge when you can pies on. good god anyone know what snooki looks like now i can't I can't imagine time's been uh, kind to her Can someone back me up on that or refute me and before half the audience is Googling Snooky now, 2021. Yikes. Uh, anyway. Oh, uh, we were going to these. Yeah, good, good stuff. DGLY, not bad. Not too bad, man. All right. It looked okay before, too. And, uh, you know, in October, 
and really above 230 it looked good you know so let's get back above that 230 area may it set up an alert I feel a lot more confident about it when it gets above the initial low point from 2012 all right 2012 dude right the movie 2012 came out and the mayan calendar where everyone was just probably freaking out and selling all their dgly so they could you know burn it on strippers in miami or something right but then it recovered hey, 2012 it didn't happen man just kidding snooky connect perfect genius gina is so what was the question here on this uh request man oh god man so you say you could ever get above what two dollars again would you say about reef will we ever see reef below two dollars again yes we will see it below two dollars again literally right now and always uh, Reef only got up. Are you talking about Reef? The is there is this some sort of uh, joke, dude? Feeler, two cents. Gotcha, dude. Gotcha. Will it ever get a back above? Oh, will it ever be below two cents again? You could. Yeah, absolutely. Things get bad on Bitcoin. Eighty-eight percent retrace always looms. So that's the deepest retrace, the Mariana Trench. Uh, these S coins do that all the time. Yeah, sure. Sure you could. Sure you could. All right. 1.2 cents is the 886. And, you know, 1.1 cent is like kind of a low point from December 30th, a high point from January 5th, and a high point from January 10th. Sure. Sure it could go much lower. It's all in Bitcoin there, right? But at the same time, right, we think from the lowest point to the highest point, it's at deep retrace levels or what could be considered deep value areas. But it's reef, dude, right? I mean, and you think, hey, man, is there a harmonic there? Maybe there is, dude. Maybe, maybe there there is, right? Now, nah, a little too deep to be any uh, conventional harmonic a textbook. It's not. It's just anything at beat, the 70% is not good. And I talked to Scott Carney about this at a, a dinner in Miami about the, or was it maybe it was the lunch uh, we had. And yeah, dude. B 70% retraces on B are normally really bad. They're just not good, man. He talks about like they hit 70% retraces on B. There's just something about it mathematically that uh, when it tries to get to the D point, it rolls over. So after hearing him say that, man, I really, really don't like assets that are in no man's land on B for XABCDs. 70% being bad. So, I mean, to me, I would just maybe. Have you heard about, uh, have you seen the trade setups, uh, like the assets that are at low risk, high reward opportunity areas? You could just maybe get reef out of your mind for now. All right. It's just, uh, there's just so many assets out there. Like remember PayPal and, and Square and UBX and a lot FSLR, those ones that are just showing so many good opportunities man regeneron yesterday looked better than reef man i'm just yes it could go lower it could see it below two cents again and it wouldn't be that weird all right man i'm sorry i don't want to be that guy but it's just the way it is dude the crypto market is just not really where the party is for the swing trader hey maybe for someone shorting or something or maybe someone scalping that has their own formula but the, for the formula that i try to teach in this community it's just not really a good time to be swing trading longing crypto i'm sorry like just i i, I hate that i have to say it but that's real life man but dude so much opportunity out there man but it's just not really crypto Economics. Oh my god, you're talking about white golf stuff. Yeah, maybe, dude. Jeez. I guess this is one that got killed in the purge. I had to, uh, I sometimes have to purge data. Yeah, man, this one, Ideanomics, man. I wanted to look at this. You've done beautiful, dude. I love the spring back test of spring. Look how long this asset's been in, uh, been here since 2000, since the global financial crisis, man. 
Ideonomics, man. So you're well off, unfortunately, at the lowest risk areas. Man, the time to be looking at Ideonomics was October 2020, right? When it sprung, it back tested the spring. I think there's an XABCD right there and it rallying. Uh, now you're just kind of like well off the low point, right? The, the lowest risk area of the range. What's up, Cherry Picking? Snooky, DD Time was kind. Really? Wow. That's kind of surprising, kind of amazing. All right, so your lowest risk entry area for Ideonomics was always going to be 150 to one dollar, and you're 315. Ooh. So strategizing along is kind of tough. I mean, you could try to strategize by just setting up a, a stop loss below 225. Right. Momentum is certainly attempting to shift somewhat, right? But definitely there is resistance, as you can see. Look at, look, man, this is big inflection point levels, right? 2011, look at this, 2014, 2017, 2018, 2020. In those years, I just said that it has reversed majorly at those levels, right? And it's reversed again just recently. Uh, today, the asset has bearishly engulfed at that major inflection point. So what needs to happen is when it does reverse and sell off, you just want to make a higher low than 232. Hard to be like great, hard to be like, hey man, great time to take a long on an asset when I it just bearishly engulfed at a major inflection point every Patreon, single time is that uh, it hits these levels on the like way up it, it reverses and it could sell off all the way back down to 150 again. Look what it did in 2017. That's it ran up and then straight down, right? Uh, Look how it broke below that level, back tested it, then went straight down to 150. Look, it ran up to that level and then and went all the way down to 175. Well, oh, that's a beautiful little harmonic. That's a beautiful little Gartley right there. Gorgeous before it went insane. So, look, I mean, straight up, straight down. So, you just so make a higher low, pivot, make a higher low above 230, and, and then it could rally again and test it. And then, if it tests it again after making no, a higher no. low, then your probability is higher that it would break to the other side. Can you take a look at the supply? would probably be going on. But anything above 341, dude, man, like anything above 341 could be insane. Where I'm talking, you could have crazy, crazy rallies, like Miami party crazy runs up. Okay. So that's your big threshold for ID EX 341. You break that, boom, you're at a uh, club 11 at 4 a.m. Okay, drinking Cristal like water. Yeah, we'll look at that, Constantine. Okay, thank you, man. Uh, so we're gonna look at Snooky now, okay, that's the next request, Snooky TA. Surprisingly, it looks good according to some people. 2021 Snooky. Let's see. Snooky test positive for coronavirus. She got infected, man. Uh, I don't know, man. It's whichever one. This is Snooky in 2021. Okay, not not too bad, right? I mean, like, you know, yeah, it could be a lot worse, I guess. But how plastic is she, right? I mean, look, here, here she was before her, her plastic surgery and after. Wow. What a transformation. Uh, source, obviously. Uh, something. I don't know. Don't worry about it. Life and Style. Yeah, Life and Style magazine is your source. Congratulations, Snooky. Uh... That's it, dude. It's our first ever celebrity analysis on a asset from the Jersey Shore. All right. Where's the Gabagoo? Okay, next one. Oh, God, we got another biotech, man. I... Cytodin Incorporated over the counter. Good. 
uh, no, terrible. Like I, I just like I would, I want nothing to do with this. The composite man ran the asset up a couple times, and now you're below your, you know, your high from 2006 and your high from 2010 and your high from 2012. Um, no, I don't like it. I think uh, it could go to much lower levels. I think it could fill a gap at 140, which means there's substantial downside. Yeah, man, there's a little bit of bullish divergence, but that bullish divergence clearly, I mean, look at the histogram. It's terrible. It's like, look what it did, man. It like, the divergence playing out, and it's just testing what was once resistance from a long time ago, like a decade ago. It's like resistance again, and it's dumping. It's down 5% today. day. Uh, this is just not something... This is not an area where you want to be longing an asset. No, it doesn't make sense. Composite operator, he acquired his position down here, like in 2019, right? The lower ends, right, uh, of the range, and it popped and it went nuts and he made his money and he's now left. He's left the building. He's uh, dumping on everyone. He's probably completely out. I mean, not all, all the way out, but you can clearly see his signature, the scar on the chart, and that was him running it up taking profit a couple times and now we're on the way down so this is the party's over kind of me i mean the way it looks to me and i think your next target would be probably 137 140 all right cydy get out of here Finance to, to fashion, boom. That's right, dude. No TA on Doge. Well, I mean, you're catching me in a heck of a mood, so I guess we'll go to Doge. Down 4.2%. Is that a joint? Uh, I, I hate it uh, below 37.41 cents. I don't like it, man. I mean, this is what happens, man. We were talking about how it didn't look that great before. I mean, I guess it's still technically making higher lows, yeah. Still making higher lows than that May 29th level. Yeah, a little XABCD right there, but dude, there's um, anything above 41 cents is awesome. Anything below it uh, means it could see 23 cents again. Um, it's gonna move with Bitcoin. Gonna move with Bitcoin. Again, crypto is just like really tough being like oh i can't wait to take a long on crypto right now because all these variables on the daily and four hour are lining up at deep value areas it's just that's not a, a case right now so it's just um but it's not fair to me because like for seven eight nine months that was the case where that was happening all the time and there were so many opportunities that were identified and they played out and now it's like we're in a different different time like there's a correction phase going on right like think about what happened seven eight months was this one major large wave up right wave one or the a wave and then now we're going through the b wave and that's the down one and that but that's it's not since the the a wave was so long and extended and large and went up in price the b wave normally it does sell off it goes 50 percent six one eight sometimes severely seven eight sixes but guess what eventually it makes a higher low and then you get an, another wave that's a very large extended wave and it's on the upside it's a bullish side so that's what we do have going for us but i mean it just takes time for that b wave to complete and we're in a period of the year where volatility dries up subsides not much goes on and uh but that's why you participate in more than one market you're not just a crypto market participant you're a stock market participant you are a precious metals commodities participant okay even forex if you want scott carney in the house dude Bruh. what's up dude what is up scott carney man yeah, I mean, it's not good. It's like it, it's like if it could have broken it, great. But look how it tests that 200 moving average and failed. Uh, once it breaks that 30 cent mark, man, a lot of trouble, dude. Yeah, I mean, it's great how it played out. Like the Gartley played out. I mean, think about from the PCZ of the Gartley on the second low, it appreciated in value 75%. People just take for granted. Like, I mean, these harmonics going up 75% from the actual pattern completion zone, dude. Like, what do you want? I mean, you wanted to go to a trillion dollars or something? That's, in, a, in market conditions like that, you better be grateful, dude. 
You can't be ungrateful, dude. Come on, man, let's go. Light in the tunnel. As much as I see a light in the tunnel on any other asset in this market, dude. It's like, it's kind of tough to. Martin Misagi tipped $100. Hey, Mitch. I got over a million tied up with LTC. Do you see a light in the tunnel? Do I see a light in the tunnel, man? Uh, we'll look at it. All right. We'll look at Litecoin again. Yeah, I mean, there could be one, uh, but it's going to need to sell off more to create an XABCD. So just. Uh, on music, stop. So you had a chance. There was a chance to make set to a you know, if someone took a long, literally at the seventy percent retrace in the second test. They could have made seventy five percent appreciation in value of their of their trade of their long. And and like, look, I mean. It's all about the ifs. If it can break that prosperity, you, you were probably going to 59 cents if you could break that. You up thrusted though, you failed. It didn't play out. It failed because the macro did not do well. So this is new homogenous market, even for Dogecoin. So you just, sorry dude, that was your Doge. Litecoin again, we were at it earlier. Um, this is your Hopium. This is like, this is like 136. Where we'll be looking for some sort of uh, reaction down there. And um, that would be a really solid looking bullish Gartley pattern. In a pretty decent context, I guess. You haven't quite gotten there yet. So that's kind of like what you'd wait for to see if it could play out. I mean, that's where if Bitcoin played ball, that's where you could, you know, get a more substantial reversal. But it's not there yet. Look how far away you are from that 200 moving average. Remember, really nice uptrends. Look at that, man. Over and over and over again. You're you're hugging the 200. You're bouncing off of it. You're getting back above it. And it's up. It's up sloping. It's not down sloping. Look at this 200 moving average almost straight down, dude. God, that's ugly. That's what I'm saying, man. You had too much opportunity. Too many opportunities to take longs to make money. And like you know, all things come to an end. And this could be done for a while. And, and but eventually. After a while, you do get reversals to the upside and continue that long-term uptrend, right? That's your light at the end of the tunnel, maybe. You know, and that might even... Pray for Bitcoin, that's all I can say. Get yeah, his Patreon night tonight. We got 36 minutes so your daily candle close. If you're enjoying the live stream, hit the like button, the bell, the sub. I don't know, man. It's like uh, the longer Bitcoin does this. Noise, noise. Kocho to twenty-two dollars and twenty-two cents. Hey, man. What do you know about today. that A H T over there? I think I did. Go, Mitch. Kocho, Kocho, Jerome. Thanks so much for the twenty-two, twenty-two, man. Thanks so much, man. All right, then. Good talk, is man. We'll see you at Brian Denny this year, Pack Stadium. It's not going to be good for you. It's not going to go well, okay? Thank you, dude. Ashford Hospitality. What are we talking about? Ashford Hospitality in all time. That's not true. What you know about that H AHT over here? Down 5.85%. So what you're talking about, dude? Well, there was a great time. I mean, like, look at that $2 area. You know, we've been here before, and it, it mooned, and eventually 850. I think it will eventually see 850. But it could all it could come all the way down to 420 to back test it before going there, because you're just in this, I don't know, mega range. I think there is a little bit of chop here, maybe, you know, like that couple times, April, <clears throat> April 20th of 2020. Is that a joint? Is that a joint? You know, definitely. You're above that. You hold above that long enough. Look what happens. I mean, straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down. Yep. Stay above six dollars long enough. You'll go to eight fifty, eight ninety six, which is a major inflection point, right? Yeah, it was good though. It, it looked uh, pretty freaking decent back in April of this year, but uh, not really at an actionable point. Or, hey man, it's all it's showing all the things we want at low risk areas like YRD. It's not showing that. 
wasn't showing WTER levels right right now. It's it's you know look I mean the asset from that low point all the back test of that support resistance from September last year. I mean it, it ran up and it, it was up 300% man. It's still up 214% in 50 days. I mean that's just those are not the areas where uh, we can apply our formula for value for uh, lower risk higher reward opportunities. Right the Seems like the opportunity has gone, right? But yeah, again, above six dollars, eight fifty to nine dollars. Yes. So watch for it. Noise, noise. Uh, signalarity. Oh, nice name. Thanks for the uh, twenty-two oh two super chat. Much love, man. Just. Okay, you asked for that? Sure, if you want to see that, we can. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uranium. Ooh. I mean, party's kind of done its thing, man. This is like you're at levels where... Really tough to justify... You know, taking reasonable longs. There was a time, though. There was certainly a time where it made more sense. We gotta look at the weekly here. This is a UEC. Dang it, man, hold on. No, I didn't mean, no, Brad, I have to manually change that every single stream, so. Oops, all right, now it's fixed. It's fixed now. That's a really weird thing to implement, right? Remember we talked about YouTube, they don't, when they make changes, they only try to make things weird and worse and it doesn't make sense. It's like someone's in a position where they didn't get hired based on merit. It was probably something else. Yup, that's YouTube. So anyway, uh, uranium, hey, I like it. I mean, $3 is nice. About $3, you know, it's, uh, is good. But wasn't it better at like 66 cents? I mean, it's really tough to be like, hey, man, I can't. Yeah, dude, great time to long on an asset when the asset's like up 400 plus percent, you know? In a little over a year, it's just gone straight up. Those are the times to be looking at assets when they're down at low points, right? When they're at lows. It's because it's easy to strategize along. The, the markup hadn't, has not happened yet, you know, and it could happen. And now it's like the markup happened. And it's like, yeah, man, about $3. Yeah, it could go up and maybe you could see, um, you could see four bucks, right? Maybe 25% upside. But the downside, if it breaks below $3, wow, the, the downside could be awful. So, you know, it's cool and all. I mean, it's cool to see it like that. But you want to see a pullback. You always want to be taking strategic longs on little those little waves down, right? The B waves, you know, it's a big wave up. And it's like it's at an inflection point where it could just up thrust and, and reverse. You're looking for something more strategic. This isn't really a strategic area to long. I'm sorry, dude. I mean, even though it could just keep going up like crazy. Again, at above $3, you could see $4. Great. So uh, I'll be live now for one hour and 25 minutes. Pretty decent stream so far, but we got another one tonight. It's just gonna be a hangout stream, you know, Patreon night on just, uh, or crypto is just not good right now. And we're waiting for it to become really good again. We're still waiting, man, but I mean, you know, Just look at uh, stuff like not fun. That did not play out, did it? Wait, well, I mean, I guess it reacted, then dumped. But that's yeah, that's not really you know a good level. Um, it went, and that's the thing, man. God, all these ones. This is one I looked at where uh, on run, 
the context, the harmonic was not very good, right? I mean, it was like the run up already happened, right? You're looking for assets at lower risk areas for harmonics to, to, to appear. And uh, it's below the threshold area. I mean, it's not really good, man. Sorry, I thought I saw that CDE, which is a minor. I'm just, yeah, this one's really good. Look at CDE. Does anything in crypto look like this right now? No. Look okay, there's an XABCD down here. And it's on the up and up, right? I mean, you break $12, you're going to $16. Look at this higher lows. Such a nice uptrend. Hold above that 200 day moving average. It's beautiful. It was up 4.55% today. Beautiful, man. Really good. Look at this. Look at this one, dude. At SPLK, which is Splunk Incorporated. Look, 88% retrace. Pattern completion zone of a beautiful bullish textbook, bullish bat pattern, falling wedge to boot, uh, bullish divergence at the pattern completion zone, at critical congestion areas, uh, ice lines from 2019 to 2018. I mean, this is the stuff you want to see. And on the daily, too, to boot. Bitcoin is in crypto just not doing that because they had a seven to eight month run that it just lasted and just kept going and going and going and now it's correcting so um and we just need more data so i mean like you just can't tell me there's not opportunity on other markets man because there really are what about paypal paypal i mean look at these one low look it's going really well we identified this and it's, it's like accumulation and a really nice uptrend after a pullback a look at one dwti plaza time to start looking at 75 plus yet Let's cat. What's up, Black Gold? Thanks for 20. Yeah, uh, sure. Thank you. Um, yeah, Blades Tree Peak guy is SPLK Splunk. Yes. That's what you're looking for. Same time, you don't have to have the, the full Tree Peak guy for uh, momentum trade like on, on PayPal, where I think it go up to $300 again. Easy. Gap fill 305, kind of. <sighs> Above the 200 moving hours, keep lagging. What's going on? Oh, driver ready to install? No, dude, not right now. PayPal, Square. Look at Square, man. I mean, it's like, you know, above that 200 day moving average, trying to hold above it of 3.3% a day. I mean, if you can hold above 193, 197 long enough, it could rally all the way up to 277 again. Look at UBX. UBX. Like, look at this, dude. I mean, the. You understand where we're at? We're, we're at a low from March of 2020. There's an XABCD, a textbook bullish garly. It's perfect. Scott Carney's like, probably like mouth is watering looking at this. It's perfect, man. These are the things you're looking for. This is like what you want to see. Crypto is not showing us this stuff right now, man. It's just not. SKLZ already up 50% since posted. I mean, dude, yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, dude, like, hey, 88% retrace, not once, but twice, with bullish divergence, and it's like the ice line from September and October of last year, holy crap, dude, double bottom, yeah, and it's, it's just like above the 200 day moving average again. Yeah, it's, it's not gonna be easy. Yeah, you're gonna have to break 2274. You have thrust to do it. Just all it has to do, it could sell off and go all the way down to 1657, back test that. As long as it makes a higher low than the two lows before it, hey man, the trend's reversing, right? The trend is reversing and there could be substantial more upside, $30, $36, and eventually $46. I mean, this is the stuff, man, that dreams are made of in crypto. It's so homogenous, man. It's like everything's the same, except kind of like Hex. I don't know, you know, and some micro cap coins. It's just a, it's like a boring market when things aren't good. But like you go to stocks and it's like, it's so, di it's so diverse. There's just so many different things going on in different areas. Like, dude, like Twitter, look at this, dude. Twitter, remember at time it was posted and there was just this harmonic and a really good inflection point above it. You're above all these resistances back from 2014. I mean, this is like really good stuff. Deep reach, 88% retraces and major uptrends. Good God, hidden bullish divergence. Oh, never mind, not hidden bullish divergence, excuse me. There really wasn't uh, much of anything. Going on. Noise, noise. Just, just the PCZ and critical levels. APA for Scott. APA, yeah, sure. Good APA. Let me, uh, we got WTI and then we'll do APA. All right, look, sorry, I'm just, we're going into it. It's like, hey man, if this doesn't, like if you're watching and you only participate in crypto and and you're seeing all this and this doesn't like motivate you to open up a brokerage account, 
and maybe start looking into trading stocks, nothing will. Literally nothing will. And it, you're only hurting yourself, dude. Like, whatever. Okay. Uh, WTI, West Texas. Oh, that was nice. Dang, dude. That was so strong. Holy crap. Yeah, man, that acceleration of uh, accumulation, man. We just had a couple of touches right there. Yeah, highest levels WTI has seen since October 2018. Gorgeous. Uh, that is a resistance. That is that high from 2005 that it's at testing. You break that, 75 bucks. Next time, 2006 levels. Oh, that's seventy dollars. A lot of chop, man. A lot of chop from history. It's tons of history. Anything above seventy-eight dollars, though, that's where the party could get nuts. Okay, above seventy-eight dollars on crude is where you could go to a hundred dollars real fast because that's happened in history multiple times above seventy-eight dollars. So, yeah, uh, we're just back. We're we're just finally back above that high point we saw just before the entire market started crashing. All of them. Black Swan event, right? COVID crash. Remember that? I remember we were covering it live on stream. Uh, this was pumping up because uh, Trump had like killed some guy from Iran, some military guy who attacked U.S. troops. And it, it was pumping, dude. And it was like, oh, my God, crude's doing things. And then like, you know, shortly after it was like, just kidding. And then that's when crude at the bottom went negative, uh, at least on the derivatives. <laughs> so, yeah, man, it just keeps climbing. With inflation, it could very dude. You just don't know, man. It could it could look an X A B C D. I mean, you go all the. I think you could see a hundred dollar crude. Yeah, we're talking about complex harmonic structures right now. Yeah, that's deep retrace from that major high up there. High to low. Oh, good guy. How do you even low that? It hit zero. Like what did it, it hit here? It hit it hit negative. Okay, I don't even know what the. Talking like deep retrace is eighty eight. Dollars, ninety-nine dollars, right? Seven eight six eight eight six. Eight eight six lines up pretty much a hundred dollars. Oh yeah, man. It's keep going. No pullbacks yet, huh? You seen uh someone's posted in the Patreon chat that you get six dollars like a gallon gas in California right now. Wow. Yo look at AP now. Go crude. Yeah, APA has uh, achieved a supply line breakout. APA. <clears throat> there it is. The breakout, man. It didn't break out. It's just kind of trying to back test that supply line, isn't it? The one from uh, 2018. Long, long, just a little bit. Yeah, you you're broken out. Yeah, it's it's happened. Um, APA uh, was the worst performing asset on the S and P 500 for the last decade. Yep, but even those assets finally reached thresholds where they get down to levels they had not seen since 88, 82, 1982, 1988. You hit it during the COVID crash low. Look at the volume. The volume signature is very telling here, okay? That volume signature is what you're looking for on significant time scale that says, hey, the bottom's in. When trends are so bad like this, this is the only thing that can reverse the overall trend volume like that. Okay, so the, the bottom could be in. Bottom could be in on APA. I think the target's 3220 minimum. 3220. And above 3220. Ooh. You're looking kind of like uh, $56 after that. Talking about XABCD stuff, that is a 100% retrace. You know, 100% retrace from 1988. Still low, the weekly 200 moving average is awful. You know, it's like you're still, you haven't, even test, you haven't tested this 200 week moving average at all. You almost didn't need 2018. You haven't tested it since uh, 2016. So, I mean, then you think that's coming. So, yeah, man. 
finally made a higher low. Higher low uh, than previous lows. Nice. A lot of work to do. But I do think 3220 is coming up in Chile. This RSI is all whacked out. I don't even know, man. Dad is weird. It's broke. It broke. That's APA. Hershkad Carney, man. No, I know he did. Well, that was like the request. Someone said, APA Hershkad. We got uh, 19 minutes till your daily candle close. Big one's trying to somehow not get devastated, which is nice. It's only down 1.2%. All coins down much, much more. Because we know, like Bitcoin dominance, we're, we're thinking Bitcoin dominance is going to 50% again. Okay. Yeah. We're thinking where Bitcoin dominance is at 88% retrace from the lowest level of all time. And the, the Gartley, the little four hour bullish Gartley at that 886, very telling. I mean, that's just implying, yep, high probability of Bitcoin dominance, smart cap dominance is gonna go up another 6% plus, okay? Which isn't really good for altcoins. Just means Bitcoin's gonna be outperforming altcoins, it looks like, for the foreseeable future. Yep. Okay. Where do you look to Dogecoin, dude? Sorry you're late. Dead chat. Dead stream. Well, I tried now. I did all I could do, and that's enough. Be sure to join the Discord if you haven't. Be sure to hit that like button and bell to sub if you haven't. Yeah, Matthew D. On 100k, so rage quit. Uh, this is the state of things. Remember that time there was hype in the chat? I remember. Thanks for the likes, love, support, contributions, everything in between. I'll be back tonight the Patreon stream. Until next time, respect the team. Hey. Okay.